when you have the AC method. So and basically, ladies and gentlemen, when we're factoring these two, the main important thing we want to look into is, again, simplifying. But the problem that we have here, before we get into simplifying, we want to see, can we factor out any GCF in either one of these trinomials? Well, yeah, but they don't share the two and the three. They don't, none, of the, none of these share any common factors, right? So we have to factor these. Now, um, I'm going to do one the long way, and then I'll do one the short way. And I'll kind of talk my way through again what I want, eventually want you guys to get to. So let's do this one the long way, though. What you guys notice in this example is, again, we have A, though, is not 1 like the last example. We have A is now 2. So when I do A times C, I get 2 times negative 3, which is negative 6, and B is negative 5. Now again, what we want to identify is what two terms multiply to give you negative 6, but then add to give you negative 5. And actually, this is, oh, that was positive 5 last one, wasn't it? So therefore, this one would be negative 6. I want to do this one. Negative 6. Would everybody agree with me that negative 6 times 1 gives you a negative 6? Negative 6 plus 1 gives you a negative 5. Yes? OK, now, if you guys remember, there was two different ways we did this. We could use the factoring technique, or we could use the box technique. I am going to do both very quickly, because the next problem I'm not going to do, um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on. 6n. So there's two methods that we basically talked about. You guys can either rewrite the you guys can either rewrite the problem, but instead of using negative two and a of five n, you could use six n plus n. Yes. That's really one n. That's where the one is. I just didn't write the one. Okay. So you can either rewrite the expression, but instead of using five negative five n, we're going to use negative six n plus one n, or you can use the box. And again, put the 2n squared in the negative 3, and then combine the middle two terms to fill in your other boxes. Now, if you're going to use this, do you guys remember at the beginning of class we talked about the factoring? Right? That's what the technique you use again. You factor. You group the first two terms, and you group the last two terms. Then what you basically do is take out what they're going to have in common. You factor out the GCF of each one of these. So the GCF of 2n squared minus 6n would be a 2n. And when you factor out a 2n, you're left with n minus 3. And then for n minus 3, you can't factor anything. So I'd just factor out a positive 1. And you're left with n minus 3. Then what you guys recognize is now that out of these two, we can factor out the n minus 3. So when I factor out an n minus 3, I'm left with a 2n plus 1. Okay, So that would have been my factored form up there, which would be n minus 3 times 2n plus 1. OK? Um, now, in the other, other change, what we did over here is we just found the side lengths. So if you find the side lengths of the, your polynomial, for 2n squared, what could be the side lengths that multiply to give me the area of 2n squared? 2n and n, right? Well, obviously, I'm going to want to have 2n here and n here, because I'm going to want to multiply. So if here's my height for n, n times what gives me n? plus 1. 2n times what gives me 6n? Plus 3. So therefore, you guys can see 2n plus 1 times n plus 3, which is the exact answer. Oh, that should be a negative. That's a negative 6. OK. So you guys can see, though, I get the same answer. So it doesn't matter. I don't care what technique you want to use. All right. The other technique is to simply just start doing these thinking about these in your head. You're multiplying these. You're getting two binomials. These two binomials need to multiply to give you 4n squared, and they need to multiply to give you negative 5. So guys, there's only so many terms. You could do 4n times n, or you could do 2n times 2n. Would I ever agree with me? That's the only two way that your first two terms can give you 4n squared, correct? The other way is you could either have the other thing is to give you negative 5, it's either negative 1 and positive 5. So you could do like negative 1, um, positive 5. Or you, could, or you could do positive 1, negative 5. 
or you could do positive 5, negative 1, right? You could flip flop those. Um, or you could also do like, so negative 5, positive 1. So what I do now when I'm doing this in my head, and it's a little bit difficult. You know, obviously, guys, if you're familiar, comfortable with this, then you can do the bottom this way. But you guys can see it kind of takes a little bit of time. Over here, what I'm doing is I'm basically just thinking in my head, I'm multiplying the outer and the inner terms and seeing if they combine to give me negative 8n. All right? So if I do 4n times 5, that's 20. Minus 1n, that's not going to work, right? So I pretty much know that 4n times 5, that's going to give me too large of a number. So let's do 5 and negative 1. 4n times 1, uh, negative 1 is negative 4n. Plus 5n, that's 1n. That's not going to work. Let's do a positive 5, negative 1. That's not going to work either, right? Because 4n times 1 is 4n. That's negative 5n. They add up to give you negative n. We need to get to negative 8. So that's not going to work. So let's look at these two. Let's do the one I wrote in there. 2n times, um, 2n times 1 is, is 2n. And then this becomes a negative, uh, this becomes negative 10n. So look at it. I actually found the right answer. Negative 10n plus 2n gives you negative 8n. So we have 2n minus 5 times 2n plus 1. But guys, if it didn't work, you could change it. You could make that positive, make that negative. You could swap the 1 and the 5 and keep on making them positive and negative. So now you guys see, what are my values that n cannot equal? Well, you've got to be careful with here because it might not be as simple as you know, the previous example. It's easy. If that, you know, if that was in the denominator, you'd say, oh, 3 cannot be there, right? But for these, if you don't know, what you have to do is set them each equal to 0. n equals 5 halves. And if you guys did your math here, n would equal negative 1 half. Does that make sense? So when, those, when you have, when n equals 5 halves, or when n equals negative 1 half, you have 0. So therefore, those divide to 1. My final answer is n minus 3 divided by 2n minus 5, where n cannot equal negative 1 half and positive 5 halves. And that is what your answer will look like on your test.